Historic Hurricane Lee starting to stack up a record performance already. The storm went from an 80 mile an hour Category 1 on Wednesday night to an incredible Category 5 with 165 mile an hour winds in just 24 hours. Huge dr uh, jump in strength just one day going more than 80 miles an hour stronger. That's more than twice the criteria for rapid intensification. So Hurricane Lee becomes only the seventh storm to achieve a mark like that. And you go back through satellite storm tracking data, and it's a very rare club of, of storms that have reached that status so quickly intensifying. Hurricane Lee is expected to be a big wave machine out in the Atlantic. Calm seas before the storm. We're getting live pictures of places that could be impacted. Beautiful weather today, by the way, across the Caribbean. But some life-threatening rip currents and dangerous surf for beaches like that. Anguilla, St. Martin, all the other islands there starting to watch for the waves to increase by later today. This wave action is going to spread westward and northward. The Bahamas on guard. Also Puerto Rico looking for the storm's fringe. And then Hispaniola, Turks and Caicos, and Bermuda through the weekend all have got to be ready for what this storm could do. In just a few minutes, we're looking for meteorologists in charge, the National Weather Service in San Juan, Puerto Rico, to join us, talking about the timing and potential impacts there. But to get a good look at the storm, it is very well organized. And by the way, the location is far in the southeast in the Atlantic that a Category 5 hurricane has been observed. And records go back 172 years. So Lee is an unusual storm. 600 miles right now east of the northern Leeward Islands in the northeastern Caribbean. It's moving west-northwest at 14 miles per hour, and the maximum sustained winds are 165 miles an hour. It's the first Category 5 of the Atlantic season. Yeah. And when we dive into this, we know that the warm water is to credit for the strength. And I, I'm now very interested to see what this newest advisory from the Hurricane Center is going to be because watching the recent scans, we had talked and we were talking about it off camera too, how a little bit of shear might be impacting it. Now that's evident by the rain bands on the eastern side of uh, of this hurricane, this formidable hurricane. But what, what has been sort of surprising is I don't think that core was affected all that much, this eye. And this is only about the, the intensity of it. I mean, it being a Category 5, as some seasons we don't even see that. So to watch how these storms behave, especially when they're in the open waters. Right now, no impact to land. But how this evolves, it's very much going to matter downstream how strong this hurricane gets because that energy is conserved in the atmosphere. And as this thing does begin to get closer to land, what it's doing now is going to play a role down downwind, but I'm, I'm fascinated to see how that core has not really been bothered by the shear. One of the other things I've been fascinated about is think of all of the other tropical storms that we have had. Typically what will happen is you'll get a little bit of that warm water that ends up uh, going undergoing condensation and, and helps to build that storm upward. And that means that for the water that's left, it's cooler. But when you go all the way down into the ocean, I mean, I'm talking about several feet in the ocean, we still have water temperatures well into the mid to upper 80s. And that is part of the reason why this has been just a pretty active season here. Reminder that about a month ago here, we saw NOAA increase uh, their predictions for this year. They were saying that this was just going to be an average year. August 10th, uh, they looked at uh, how warm the waters were, and they said, nope, this is going to be a pretty active year. So Lee has really been contributing, I think, to what we've been seeing all season long. And Amy, we still haven't officially reached the statistical height of hurricane season, which is in about two days, and we still have up until November 30th. That's right. There's more than, you know, there's half the season left on the calendar, and we're just getting into the peak of things. Um, it, it does play out interesting where we entered an El Nino season thinking we might have less activity, and the sea surface temperatures in that battle clearly are winning the war in, in activity and also the ability to fuel and keep storms going. But one of the big questions is, does this storm affect land? What could it potentially do for the islands? We know it's going to kick up some dangerous rip current. The surf zone is going to be an issue. But does that continue once we get the storm a little better positioned late in the weekend for the East Coast to be impacted? The wind field has to be much larger than it is right now. We're looking at a storm where the hurricane force winds only extend about 45 miles outside of the center of the storm. That must grow in size in order to have a reaching yep. effect. It's true that it's going to be a big wave action, and we're looking at 40, maybe 50 mile an hour uh, wave heights well out into the ocean, which stirs everything up.
but you still got to have a Winfield expansion in order to have some real impact. And this is when it's going to get interesting, I think, because it's going to be more of an impact or it will have more of an influence on the immediate mainland of the United States. We'll have to watch the, the greater Antilles, the northern side of the Leeward Islands as well, because that's where this storm is going to make that close brush, these, these fringe effects that we're going to see. But it's around this time frame Monday that we'll, we'll begin to see it take a shape where we'll, we'll know and, and understand, hey, these are the types of impacts and all things are on the table, including the life-threatening storm surge and the beach erosion. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.